China has recovered samples from the far side of the moon for the first time, which could reveal much information about the history of our solar system. Last Sunday, it conducted a test on the Qianlong-3 rocket that was supposed to only ignite its engines, but instead, it took off on its own. What happened to it? Welcome to our channel. Last Tuesday, the capsule of the Chinese mission Chang'e 6 arrived on Earth with samples from the far side of the moon. This is a historic event because no mission before had managed to collect rock from the far side of the moon and bring it back to Earth. All the samples collected in the past by the Soviet Union, the United States, and China itself were gathered from the side of the moon always facing Earth. Analyzing the samples taken by the Chinese mission could clarify the origin of the solar system and beyond. The capsule landed in the Mongolian region and was intercepted by recovery teams. In recent days, researchers have extracted the container with the samples from the capsule and secured it to be transported to laboratories. The samples come from an area located at the lunar south pole, specifically from a crater called Apollo, within the South Pole Aitken Basin, abbreviated SPA Basin. The crater, in addition to dating back to the formation period of our solar system, is located in an ancient basin that, according to recent observations, has large reserves of frozen water underground. The mission lasted a total of 53 days. It began on May 3rd when the Chang'e 6 spacecraft was launched aboard a Long March 5th rocket and arrived in lunar orbit after five days. The spacecraft consists of four separate modules, an orbiter, a lander, an ascent module, and a return capsule. The orbiter, along with the return capsule, remained in orbit around the moon, while the lander and the ascent module descended inside the Apollo crater. The lander was equipped with a camera and a 3D laser scanner which it used to automatically detect and avoid obstacles to choose the safest landing area. After landing, the probe collected almost 2 kg of rock and soil using a drill to take samples from the subsurface and a robotic arm with a scoop to collect them from the surface. The load was placed in the ascent module which activated its rockets and returned to lunar orbit where the orbiter was waiting for it. The two modules docked so that the samples could be transferred from the ascent module to the capsule inside the orbiter. The orbiter then headed towards Earth for re-entry. At about 5,000 km away, the capsule with the samples detached and entered Earth's atmosphere. After the deployment of the parachute, it landed in the Mongolian desert. But why are these samples very important? Analyzing the samples will allow scientists to conduct research on the composition of the far side of the moon. The material collected could help understand how and when massive objects hit the moon and Earth billions of years ago, and why the visible face of the moon is so different from the hidden one. Most of the impact craters were formed about 3.9 billion years ago. In the young solar system, there was a period called the Late Heavy Bombardment, which occurred about 4 billion years ago, characterized by numerous impacts on the moon that also hit Earth and other planets. There are two theories that explain the Late Heavy Bombardment. The first is the migration of the giant planets to their current orbits. Their movement would have thrown various remaining objects from the formation of the solar system towards the inner planets, producing a peak in impacts. The second theory is that the late heavy bombardment was not a peak, but the end of a longer period of impacts. To understand this, it is necessary to analyze the samples from the SPA basin because it is about 4.3 billion years old, therefore older than other impact basins. Obtaining precise dates on the age of the SPA basin and the overlapping craters will help better understand the history of the moon and the origins of life on Earth. In fact, it is possible that asteroids and comets brought organic molecules and water to Earth during the late heavy bombardment. Getting the events in the right timeline is essential to understand the origin of life on our planet and the history of how the solar system formed. Chang'e 6 was China's second mission to the far side of the moon. In 2019, the Chang'e 4 mission had already landed a rover called U-22. To date, China is the only country to have landed on the far side of the moon. When on the other side, Earth is hidden by the moon, so direct communication is not possible. A satellite is needed to transmit the signal and connect the lander with Earth. China succeeded in these missions thanks to its two satellites in lunar orbit. Furthermore, China plans to send two more missions to the moon. One in 2026 called Chang'e 7, which will land on the Shackleton Crater at the lunar south pole to search for frozen water in the soil. Shackleton is also one of the candidate sites for NASA's Artemis 3 mission, which will bring humans back to the moon. The other mission by China will take place in 2028 called Chang'e 8, 
and will attempt to use resources at the South Pole sites to verify if it is possible to build structures on the moon. In fact, China wants to build a lunar base near the South Pole. The base, called the International Lunar Research Station, will be built to conduct various scientific experiments. Last Sunday, the Chinese company Space Pioneer was conducting a test on the Qianlong-3 rocket. We are talking about a rocket with performance comparable to SpaceX's Falcon 9, consisting of two stages, with the first one being reusable. It was precisely on the first stage that a test called Static Fire was being conducted, which involves igniting the engines for a few seconds without the rocket taking off. Apparently, something went wrong and the rocket detached from the launch platform flying uncontrolled for several hundred meters. Shortly after, the engine shut down and the rocket, still loaded with fuel, plummeted to the ground, ending with a violent explosion. Fortunately, there were no casualties. According to the space company, there was a failure of the clamps holding the rocket anchored to the platform, causing it to fly. Space Pioneer planned to conduct an orbital launch soon, but after this incident, there could be delays. Thank you for watching. Leave a like and subscribe to the channel to not miss new videos.